Welcome back to Artist Exposed with Tim Moss and my wonderful and beautiful and fabulous guest, Ratanya Alda. Uh, her book, The Mommy Dearest Diary, which we will again be talking about very shortly. But um, I just wanted to kind of touch on some of the amazing films that you have been a part of. Um, hello, Dolly. Mm -hmm. Oh, Barbara Streisand. Oh, God, mm -hmm. she was in that. <laughs> well, there is a Barbara Streisand story. Stop and, it. Oh, let me touch you. <laughs> in my book. I won't give it away because, you know. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I, and especially Gene Kelly, too. You know, working oh with him, he directed gosh. it. What a sweetie he was. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. So I did her photo doubling, but I, oh, I did only the East Coast stuff, which is mainly uh -huh. Hello, Dolly. And so the West Coast stuff was done by somebody else, but the East Coast stuff was done by me. And then I was a townsperson in it. And guess whose Ooh. dress I wore? I have no idea. Judy Garland's no dress way. from Meet Me in St. Louis. Excuse me while I pass out right now. It's it. I it's, have to touch you again. <laughs> yes. There's a picture of it in my book. It, it's that if, if you've seen Meet Me in St. Louis, it's kind yes. of a slate gray with a yellow dicky and yellow little tassels. Oh that's goodness. the dress so that at, is so yeah cool. at that time we i fit into that dress <laughs> now i don't think i would but i wore that as a townsperson and gene kelly was so sweet you know he was just a, a, a love to work uh -huh. with and i was such a legend too uh -huh. also well now another uh, these are like movies that changed or had such an impact in the in how we view films now yes. such as um a deer hunter. Oh wow! Well, my word! Now you played opposite. You were the wife uh, at the beginning of the movie with the marriage, mm -hmm. uh, the wedding scene. You were the bride. I was the bride in the beginning. I married John Savage, John and, Savage. and then I'm, at the end, I'm at the funeral. We're all together as friends uh -huh. again. So the middle and the end. I mean, the beginning and the end. Um, that was a wonderful experience. That was probably Michael Cimino was fabulous. I got to mm -hmm. say. All the bad rap he's gotten, it's not true. He's a great director. And mm -hmm. he he loved actors and he mm -hmm. and then he he was very smart. He got us there a week before we started shooting. In the middle of nowhere in this hotel that was in the middle of the heat wave. And so we were kind of forced to live together, eat together. We, by the time that. we started, smart, smart, yes, smart director. Absolutely. By absolutely. the time we started that movie, we were bonded. We were right. all good friends. And we, that came across in the film. Didn't it, though? Yeah. See? So just a week, just five days early, being like that. Of course, we shot, i got to tell you, it was a really difficult shoot because we were mm. in the middle of this heat wave. It was 115 my degrees. Goodness. And my dress never got dry, my wedding dress. Wow. It was like, uh, that dress was like, Semi, they, they tried their best, but uh -huh. it was so humid and so hot, like a, a horrible New York day. But it went on. Uh -huh. So uh, so it was under difficult physical. And, and that Lemco Hall where we do the dancing, that was not air conditioned. That was oh a real hall. Oh, my goodness. So, so, but it was a test of the director and the people that committed to the film. Right. I tell you, when I was doing the film, I had the most wonderful experience because everybody was there to help. Every, unlike mommy dearest uh -huh. the stars were all there to help everybody uh -huh. uh, the uh, and what happened is that we I mean I just had a great experience I didn't know it was going to become this great classic right, film I don't right. think any of us thought about that right we just were trying to do our parts and to tell Absolutely. the story so the fact that this movie has become still People are seeing it still and say it really deeply affects them. Absolutely. And it is revered. It's definitely. revered. So I'm really, I'm proud of that. And I am proud that I am in Mommy Dearest because yes. I think it is a great movie. It has become a cult classic. Absolutely. So I am just saying, yes, I'm yes. fabulous that I'm in this movie. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Miss, Miss Dunaway. I am really honored. I yes. think it's great. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you were absolutely fabulous. Well, just to, again, to go over a few more yeah. on your IMDb, um, you also had some um, kind of horror movies or scarier, like The Fury, The Dark Half, When a Stranger Calls. What a brilliant movie, the original, mind you. Yes, <laughs> right, exactly. And, and Amityville 2, which has become like a cult classic. Yes, I yes. think it's playing on AMC the end of this month with uh -huh. the horror thing. Well, but I will be tuning in. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you watch me scream. Yeah. Uh, Amityville 2 is like, 
become a, a much more uh, People love it much more than when it opened because they're mm -hmm. realizing that this wonderful I Italian director that directed it, Damiano Damiani, mm -hmm. uh, did such an incredible job because he was focused on the characters mm -hmm. and people getting to know the characters. So when horrible things happen to them, yeah. you really care mm -hmm. as, as opposed to just just the special effects. And he, it was. Damiano was really responsible for getting this side underneath the psychological stuff, mm -hmm. which right. is kind of the most terrifying stuff yes, if you absolutely. really think about it. Yeah, yeah, and uh -huh. uh, and also George Romero's film, The Dark Half. I loved working with mm -hmm. George, and that movie is now being rediscovered because. The studio that was supposed to release it went bankrupt right before the movie was released, mm -hmm. so it got it kind of got wow. no press, nothing, and it, it just kind of disappeared and now wow. people are finding it again yeah. and Tim Hutton is in it he's wonderful uh -huh. he and I have these this this incredible difficult horrific horrific scene uh -huh. and how fun was that to play it was really wonderful and it was it was we had to go to really dark places and then uh -huh. George Romero God bless his heart he's great he said to me afterwards, he said, Ritonia, I'm cutting that scene down and down. And I said, well, George, why? I thought you loved the scene. He said, it's the only scene I ever did that really scared me. <gasps> Oh my gosh! And I said, "Don't cut it! Don't cut it down! Oh my gosh! Don't cut it down! You scared George Romero. Yeah, I, I love just, that. I, I know. I thought it really. I said, "Really? But you've done all of these movies." Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's wonderful. So, uh, so I'm glad it's being rediscovered because uh -huh. it's like that Stephen King thing that was kind of fell n to nobody's fault, but the studio went yeah. bankrupt. Yeah. So. Oh my goodness. Well, and then Last Exit to Brooklyn as yes. well. And my goodness. Last Exit to Brooklyn. Thank, thank you, Vincent Canby, wherever you are in heaven. Uh -huh. I had this scene with my transgender son, um, and it's a very powerful scene. Again, that director cut it down a little bit, but Vincent Canby picked that out in his review as mm. his favorite scene. Mm. Uh -huh. And then, of course, he died afterwards. Why, oh. why, Vincent? Why did you have to die? He was so sweet. He was so generous to actors. What a great critic uh -huh. he was because he would mention actors where a lot of times um, you'll you'll see a scene mentioned, but they won't mention the actor. But uh -huh. Vincent Canby always mentioned the scene and wow. the actor. Nice. Yeah, very nice. nice. Where did that go, you know? You know, it was another one of those movies that kind of disappeared. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I think it well, was... Well, I, I meant the, the where directors oh, where... care about their actors, but also and go and continue the with the movie. Because, yes. no, no, I, I see things written sometimes. I'm not even in them. I mean, it's not like I'm complaining personally, but I see write, uh, critics write, oh, I like this and this and this. Well, mention the actor, right. <laughs> please. I mean, that's please just mention the actor. Right, because I mean they don't understand what it requires to do that, that particular scene, and to create that illusion or that that emotion. I wrote Pauline Kael. When, when mm -hmm. greetings came out, she loved my scene. She wrote terrific things about this funny girl that's doing this, and she described my scene. And I wrote her, I said, Oh, Miss Kale, I'm so grateful that you like the scene, but why didn't you mention right. my name? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like you're just dying for if somebody lo I mean, if somebody doesn't like you, okay, good, they didn't mention me. Yeah. But if they like you and they like your scene, I thought, and so she did write back. She she used some I don't forget what she said, but uh -huh. she said something. Well, you know, it just didn't work out or whatever. But uh, so, but Vincent Canby always did that. Nice. I'm, I'm not just talking. When I read his reviews, he always mentioned his actor. That's actors. so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so nice. Well, once again, you're not just a um, film actress. You are also um, television. You've got quite a list and a very impressive list. Um, a few of them is, of course, as the world turns, Law and Order. Santa Barbara, Beauty and the Beast, the television show, yes, JAG, Judging Amy, CSI, and one of my faves, The Onion News Network. Oh, I love oh, them. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> they're so funny. I would love to do another Very segment. Creative, yes. they're, they're so, it's such an insane thing, and it's so much fun. Oh, God. And, and I did three, I guess starting in three Law and Orders, which was really kind of special because I was in both the Law 
and the order. Uh-huh. It's unusual because usually you're in the law or the order. You're never right, in both. Right. And I had a great experience working with Vince D'Onofrio in uh-huh. Law and Order CI. He was just a terrific a, a star actor. Where he was uh-huh. so giving. And Fred Berner directed the last one uh-huh. I did. He was um, just a lovely another director rare director that loves actors yeah. and so and then the first one I did also was with I played James Reborn's wife with my, the original Michael Moriarty and I was on both of them too and what great writing on those shows mm-hmm. like right? it's like yeah. wow you know uh, so I mean I just had a great experience uh-huh. working on those those are the three that really stand out that uh-huh. I because the parts were so well written yeah but and I love the other ones too you know it's right like, of course but uh, doesn't that make such a difference the writing because you can really like dig in yeah. deep into some in certain characters yeah. and then there are others where it's just kind of surface and the writing is everything I, I always I always say God bless the writer because he gives you story and I'm the storyteller. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And the better story I have, the better I can tell it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, um, speaking of stories, be sure to get Ratanya Alda's book, The Mommy Dearest Diary, which we are going to be talking about in just a few moments. And we're coming back and talking about probably the most, what you're most known for is your role as Carol Ann in the movie Mommy Dearest. Yes, yes, I am. I love being Carol Ann. (laughs) We will come back and talk about that next. Thank you.